from the WMUR Broadcast Center, Mike Bodet, and meteorologist Kelly Bates with the extended weather forecast. This is New Hampshire's News 9 this morning. Good morning and happy Father's Day. It is 7.30. We've got our top story straight ahead. But And finally, time travel is a science fiction concept, but recently visitors to Nestlenook Farm in Jackson were transformed back to the Victorian era. Correspondent Steve Camming shows us what life was like prior to the turn of the century. The idea of time travel has been capturing our imagination for ages. But so far, no one's come up with a way to turn back the clock. But for more than 150 people in Jackson, the answer was easy. If they couldn't go back in time, they'd bring time back to them. Nestlenook's Victorian Games Day brought together all the elements of an 1890s country fair. The whole place became a time machine of sorts, and everyone here seemed perfectly happy to leave the 20th century behind. I wish I had a horse instead of a car. Sure, oh, this has been absolutely wonderful. I mean, it really gives you a feeling about how things were in the past. It makes you wonder about the future, too. No one here had to wonder about the future. Madame Bubka's tea leaves and tarot cards had all the answers. This event began as a kickoff celebration for summer Victorian sleigh rides, and then it began to take on a life of its own. A past life, you might say. We're delighted. People have called and come from all over to share a vision of the Victorian era. And on this day, that vision came to life in a hundred different ways, some small and some tall. If a picture really is worth a thousand words, then this was one day that spoke volumes. In Jackson, I'm Steve Camming for WMUR's News 9. Welcome to the first edition of Resort Sport Network's Mount Washington Valley Adventure Guide. My name is Steve Camming, and I'll be your host as we explore a few of the places and ways to find adventure in the North Country. riding, and an incredible car race on Mount Washington. But first we're going to go into the heart of the White Mountains Presidential Range, to a place known to adventurers across the country, Tuckerman's Ravine. The Mount Washington Valley Adventure Guide will be back after this message. The Mount Washington Valley has been described as heaven on earth by mountain bikers. There are literally hundreds of miles of trails woven throughout the countryside. Considering that mountain bikers can now compete for Olympic medals, this area could someday be the training place of champions. Three quarters of a million acres of White Mountain National Forest is open to you, except in designated wilderness areas. But if that's not enough, there are logging roads, old railroad beds, and even trails along rivers like this one. You tell them. I'll tell them. After these messages, we'll be right back. The first climb to the clouds race was run on Mount Washington in 1904. Just getting to the top was considered an achievement. Today's drivers can reach speeds of over 100 miles per hour, and the record for the eight-mile road to the summit of the Northeast's highest peak stands at just six minutes, 45 seconds. At this year's GMC truck Mount Washington hill climb, the weather didn't cooperate, but that didn't slow anybody down. Carl, when you drive on this mountain, what kind of approach do you take to tackling this course? Well, yesterday I was very cautious with it, but uh, obviously you have to be very... As Bob Elliott discovered, you don't want to drive too fast. I'm here with Bob Elliott, who's climbed to the clouds, just had an abrupt stop. Bob, what happened? Well, it's coming up through. It's been a pretty good run all the way up through, and 
as uh, the car, the rain on the road wasn't really slowing me down much. I had to lift a couple times more than what I normally do. But as I came into this corner, I came in, I was doing pretty well, came in a little bit hot into the first one, came up the second one, my normal line where I usually do, felt the, the uh, right rear of the car lift like it usually does. That rear end comes up about six inches off the ground. And as I cut the corner, she just started coming up. And it was just like slow motion. She started lifting, lifting, lifting. And the neat, only thing that I can think of outside of my driving, and I'm not trying to get out of this roll, this is my own fault. But the wind might have caught underneath that car. There's 40 mile an hour winds up here, and it might have caught under the car and just rolled it right over. Wind? What wind? What wind? As Winston Churchill once said, there's something about the outside of a horse that is good for the inside of a man. And I'd have to agree. We're riding today at the Fields of Adatash and Bartlett. There are still a few places you can rent horses in the valley, like here at Adatash or at Nelson Look Farm in Jackson. And not only is riding a lot of fun, but it's a great form of exercise. It's also very traditional. Around the turn of the century, there were nearly as many horses in these parts as there are people. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for a ride. Try to ride a bareback horse. Watch this Wait flank. A second now, let him talk first a little bit. All right, let him talk a little bit. He got your name. Steve Cammy from Resorts Sports Network. This guy has never been on a fucking horse in his life. He is a television celebrity from the Resorts Sport Network in your area, Channel Three. He's going to try his luck on a horse called Yellow River. Never been on a bareback horse before in his life. It's going to be <laughs> it's going to be seen this next week, I believe, on the morning news. Also, a monthly adventure guide is going to feature it as well. He's tried to wrestle a steer already today. That was interesting. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's see what he do. Hang on, Steve. Hang on. We're going to do a demonstration and uh, teach you how to do it off the ground, working with an, a live steer and actually turn the steer to the ground. Okay, how big are these steers? Oh, they'll run six to 800 pounds. Okay. So they can be big. Yep. These ones here are running uh, probably around five, 600 pounds. Right no problem at all. All right, five, 600 pounds. You just oh, kind of no. flip them right down. A lot of technique. Oh, yeah. Good. Putting them here. This one goes in here. Put them in the pocket. We might have been more there. Put this head up here. Here. Just put him in my pocket. Take him by the nose. Put this here, hip in, and there you go. Are still down there, down by Plymouth Rock, and they were they were making their their lives and building their communities and trying to just like they were doing in, in parts of New Hampshire and other parts along the coast too. But, well, kind of not like kind of like an axe, yeah. A tomahawk. About me, one guy Al's already introduced us to is back in the news tonight with his own TV special. I only build a railway to the summit. I submit we let them build a railway to the moon. It's called Railway to the Moon, and it documents the history and scenic splendor of Mount Washington's famous Cog Railway. 
one-hour program, which aired Sunday afternoon on public broadcasting Channel 10, was premiered Saturday night at Jackson, New Hampshire's Grand Hotel, the Eagle Mountain House. Guests wore costumes from the period when the more than 120-year-old Cog Railway first wound its way up the Great Mountain. I'm very curious to see how this Sylvester Marsh's contraption is going to get us to the top myself. <laughs> That's not surprising if you know the show's creator, independent producer Steve Cameron. Remember what you're doing and be prepared to do it again immediately following the first take. Perhaps you remember Steve. He's the guy who orchestrated last winter's recreation of a Courier and Ives print for a New Hampshire entrepreneur. I, our friends are always teasing us that we're, we're uh, 80s kind of people, 1880s. <laughs> Now, Camming's latest creation is slated to be distributed this fall to other PBS stations. So Steve Camming can share with the rest of the country a piece of New England history that lives on today. Al Feinberg, News 13. Good idea. Sure. That's good.